Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. <laughs> Shout out all you hardcore boxing fans out there, hope you're well. Shout out all you haters, I hope you're well too. Change your lives and subscribe to Porky's Corner. You know it makes sense. I'm just on my way to put another couple of hours in it. Snooker place. Practice makes perfect. I got my arse handed to me by Paul Sykes. Uh, so it's. Uh, I'm gonna put the time in and get better. So I've got a yardstick now. If I can take a frame off him, I'm playing well. But he ain't just about potting, is it? You know, it's about safety play and all that. But anyway, uh, before I forget. My mate wants a copy at managers. When I look back at this later, he wants a copy at managers agreement between boxers and managers. Remind me for that, for Frank. Uh, shout out to Bullseye for uh, Magic Trees. Got some here for you, Nicola. So don't be thinking you're left out. Uh, right, what can we talk about today? Right. I want to talk about. I've left it in house, that piece of paper as well, what are we going to talk about? I want to talk about frauds in boxing. Now what I mean by frauds, I mean by people in the boxing industry who basically are just winging it. Who would you say is winging it in the boxing industry and just basically just doing it for money and playing us? Who would you say is playing us? I'm asking you, I'm not going to name anybody any names, have a good idea. Don't forget, I go in on meetings and I hear people say this and say that, they want to do this and want to do that. And I see straight through these people. Not all, not everybody in the boxing industry is as genuine. They're not genuine people. I have a problem with that, when dealing with genuine people. Uh, that's what I have a problem with. Uh, Mick Whale, he's a genuine guy, isn't he? He comes in our office with Josh, and we say, "What about him for Josh, Mick?" And he'll just tell you straight. There's no, uh, there's no, there's no bullshit. There's no messing about. We want to fight him. This is what we want to do, and then we want to do that down line, make it happen, and that's it. Team meetings is what it's all about. Team being team players. Hashtag levels. If you're the team player, you can move forward, can't you? But but yeah, so it's all looking good. I look a bit of a dick, don't I? With, uh, with magic trees hanging down. Only a helmet would put four magic trees on, so I put my, should I put my five on? I put all five on, I've got none left then. Uh, but yeah, so I think that boxing's full of fraudsters. Frauds. People saying one thing and doing another. It's very easy to go back on your word. So I very I try not to go back on my word a lot. If I, it bothers me a lot that. But I was looking through some comments that fucking hell and you know and then I've got a meeting tomorrow with Den and I'm just gonna go in that meeting all guns blazing. I want I want Tommy Frank to fight uh Sonny Edwards, that's the fight I wanna see next. For some reason. Glyn Rhodes and Dennis don't want it next, they want it down the line, but I want it now. Tommy's had 11 fights, 
if it, if it goes the WBC route, which is going, that'll be 12 and 0. It'll be 12 and 0. Uh, WBC International Silver. I mean, where are we where are we going with Tommy Frank? Then where are we going? So already now, I can sense trouble before I've even got to the meeting. I can sense trouble, whereas I'm going to say, Dem, what are we doing here with this guy? Tommy's just going to mow him down. Then it's going to be, you've got L plates on, uh, why don't you go put your own shows, that'll be the second one, or leave it to me, or you're here to learn, or what are you going on about, why are you digging Tommy out? Well, can't dig other people out if we can't dig our own fighters out. Tommy don't get a say in it. He's a young kid, isn't he? 26. But what about Sonny Edwards? He's 24, isn't he? He's there to he's there to be took if Tommy's going to take him. Now they can't punch for Toffee, but he's super skilled. Now I want to see it. Now I'm sure they could get a rematch clause, but I want to see the fight before it marinates too long. I don't want it to go go away from us. Now. So that's that's that that might I might be your sack this week. You've got to say it, haven't you? Sooner or later, you've just got. To, I want to see the fight. I know Den does, but I don't want to be waiting till I'm old to see Tommy Frank fight. I want to see the fight now. You know what I mean? That's what I want to see. But we'll see, won't we? We'll see, but. I think it's a great fight, I think Tommy's got a good chance against Sonny Edwards, I don't make him a favourite, but I want to see him in a test, I don't want to see him mowing down these sort of guys. These sort of guys that he's fighting now, I criticise Steffi Bull for, put, and for, for fights like this, at least now Steffi Bull's with Ryan Rose, they might step it up a bit, because Ryan had, had Nasser in an hard fight, didn't he, the kid, if you go on to my very first video, the very first video I did, Oh, Yakim Nasser, he's a Ryan Rhodes fighter, and his debut, Ryan had a lot to say in, his, in the fight that he was in with, and, and they nearly pulled it off, but he lost, didn't he? Now, Ryan, Ryan's not going to put crap fights on, so in a way, he might make Steffi Bull a better promoter. Best looking bird I've ever seen in Max, but she must be lost. We're getting back to Tommy Frank. I want to see Tommy Frank in a 50 50 fight or in a challenge. I don't want to see WBC silver belts. I mean, I don't mind interim belts or international, but when it gets to interim or international and then silver, I mean, what next? The bronze. I don't agree with that. Um, Two people lost today in Max, but what's going on? So I don't know. I don't want to see that. I don't. I don't want to see that. But this is how it's going. I mean, whatever happened to traditional route? Kids wanting area, English, British, Commonwealth. Come on. That's what I want to see. Traditional route. I want to see British Boxing Board of Control start putting the foots down. For example. Who was the last British fighter to win a belt outright, apart from Lewis Ritson? Who well, basically knocked three stiffs out, didn't he? That's what I, I think. I think he knocked stiffs out for that for that belt outright. People can say, well, bloody bar. Robbie Barrett and Cardell, they're not world, they're not world class, are they? I think Robbie Barrett did well to get a British title, not taking anything away from him. But... It was an easy win for him, wasn't it? Steffi Bull and them knew that, that's why they put money on the wrist and to win by knockout. But... Is that harsh, Stiff? No. No, because when you're knocking people out in a round and you're winning a belt outright in record time or nearly record time, the gifts aren't they? That's how I look at it. He's a massive lightweight, but Ritson's also a small light welterweight. That are super lightweight. That's why, in my opinion, Robbie Davis Jr. beats him. Also, Robbie Davis Jr., in my opinion, is a world-class fighter. 
People can say, oh no, Porky, you've jumped gun there, he ain't, he ain't. Let me tell you this, right, and I said this ages ago. Robbie Davis Jr. is the real deal. Yeah, that kid who beat him, you know, when he, the only defeat he's got. So what? He corrected it, didn't he? Hey, has Ritson corrected that loss he's got? No, he hasn't, has he? Do you know what I mean? So as far as I'm concerned, he corrected it. So I met Robbie Davis, Robbie Davis Jr. A massive favourite in that fight. He is that good. So I make him a favourite in Ritson fight. Although... It's an exciting fight, Ritson can punch, but can he punch it that way? There's too many unanswered questions in this fight, but it's a very good fight, and it's a good show what they've put together there. I've just watched the Dave Allen interview. Uh, <laughs> Dave Allen, in space of two or three weeks, he's gone from being a blind man, walking around with double glazing glasses on, Putting tweets out saying he's had bad headaches, 18, 19 months, whatever he's said, and bad, bad, bad health. His health's been in. He's had bad health. He's gone from all that and having prescription glasses on to not wearing prescription glasses and 2020 vision. So Dave Allen, I know you're watching. Is it Phil Mercatroyd you went to in Cunningsby, Dave? Because he's a pal of mine and. Uh, I want to know what eye drops you've been using, Dave, because I've had problems with my eyes all my life. One minute I've got good eyes, the next minute I haven't. I want to know what eye drops Dave Allen's using because he's gone from being all washed up and sky thinking, oh God, this is end for Dave Allen, so they've given him a bit of pundit work. Uh, you know, he's wearing his glasses and we were going to let the Dave Allen story continue, but now it looks like there's another script being wrote that Dave Allen, all of a sudden, he's not a blind man and he's not got a concussion and he ain't had bad health. He just said it, apparently, to take the shine off David Price's win. So, so if that ain't true, that's what we call a lie. So Dave Allen told a lie. What a boxer telling a lie to get his son out there. I don't know, but I'll tell you something I did here. Freddie Cunningham told somebody that Dave Allen is not getting on a Joshua undercard ever again. <coughs> so, Dave Allen, in his wisdom, has decided to use his loaf and say, for PR reasons, oh, I don't want to fight in Saudi, what they do to people out there, it's terrible, I don't want to fight there. I think that's great for Dave Allen, that. So all the money in the world and Dave Allen wouldn't fight in Saudi. Dave, you're not telling the full story, are you, mate? You wanted to get on the sh on the Saudi show. We know that, Dave, don't we? So tell the truth. But you said something about Joshua that he should go to a remote island and retire after that performance against Ruiz. And it come back and bit you in arse, didn't it, Dave? Because when they come down to doing the show in Saudi, what happened? They went, not having Dave Allen on after what he said about Joshua. So now what happens is Dave's gonna spin it into some, I don't wanna go to Saudi, blah de blah. Well, let me tell you this. There's gonna be more shows in Saudi. And Dave Allen will fight in Saudi. But that's just one example of boxers spinning the yarn. Tyson Fury's been doing it for years. Tyson Fury's been doing it for years. It's not about money on a Monday. And on Tuesday, he'll say, no, they went with Frank Warren because he's the magic man. He gets the most, pays the most money. Of course it's about money. Of course it is. Look, leopards don't change the spots. But don't sit there mugging me off in interviews saying this and that. You said you had bad health and that it's time to pack in and all that. Now you're coming back. You're coming back for one reason, money and buying houses. There's nothing wrong with that, but at least just come out and say it. Don't come out with rubbish. People are not stupid, David. They are not stupid, all right? For example, here's another, let me tell you another thing here, right? I'm fortunate enough, very fortunate that I'm, I'm not a rich person. I've got a few quid, but I, I'm not a rich person. Like I said, I've wasted 20 years of my life. 10 in jail, 10 on drugs, and I'm still battling that now. But I'm surrounded by people that are... I'm surrounded by people that are 
very successful and bright and they've got my best interests at heart and that's more important to me than anything and let me tell you this I'm fortunate enough that my business partner's got very good software that she's invested in to help the channel moving forward and let me tell you this we can tell you how many people look at our videos and share them right but they don't comment and it's true I have people ring me all the time yeah I've just sent that to so and so or somebody might say yeah I sent that to uh, me mate I say well why didn't you leave a comment oh I can't do that porky well why can't you do why can't you leave a comment well you're a bit out there out there I said so basically you don't want to leave a comment because in case it affects you down the line meaning the Freddie Cunningham strategy David Allen said something about Anthony Joshua and Freddie Cunningham says, bump, we're not having him on the show, coming out with stuff like that about Anthony. But that's a, but I agree with Dave anyway, because he was right on what he said. And also, Dave had, a, had to wait a couple of hours to spar Joshua, didn't he? Up at the EIS a couple of years ago, and he wasn't happy about it. And you don't even get paid. So, and let me tell you this, Dave Allen's not been dropped by Joshua once in over 600 rounds. So he's a tough kid. Or oh, he's had it punched out of him, hasn't he? If you've had Joshua at 600 rounds, can you imagine what, what's going through Dave's head? He's had all that, and then he's putting tweets out like he put out. If Board took his licence off him, it's his own fault, isn't it? But he won't do, because as long as they have a piece of paper saying that he's passed the medical, Dave Allen will be alright, won't he? But I'm just saying, it's, we could call this video, The Things Boxers Say. And what I might do when I get in later, I might, because I'm going to Mick Wales gym tonight, I might dig up some comments that Box have said and then they've gone back on, but I think we've heard all this before. People contradict themselves, but when fans are sending me emails about it, there's a lot I can't say because you can, I can give too much to you all. I give enough as it is, but I can give too much and it can backfire. Now, but what I will say is this, it's an industry built on money and lies and deceit all right i've been sat in a car with somebody and he's rung this particular person and he said something and then i've gone to this person i'm not going to say this person is why did you say that about him thought he didn't even fucking like him well we're gonna need him down line aren't we do you see where i'm coming from fuck fucking needing people down line be your own man be your own man do you know what i mean we, we, we could do a, a guy for one of our fighters and Steffi Bull's got a kid in the same way. Think I'm going to ring him? Let's put him on our show. Am I fuck? No, 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 no. Dennis can do that. I'm not like that. I fall out with people. Till I've shook their hand and it's buried. I, till actually it's buried. I don't speak to people again. Steffi, I will catch up with you soon. Me and you're going to have a little word about something. You know what? Don't worry, there'll be no violence, you don't have to be frightened of me. I'm not stupid enough to come to your house where it's cambered up. You've got kids in the house and that. You don't go to people's houses and involve the families, dear Steffi. Or mention things about the girlfriends in anything. In boxing beef. You just keep it real. I don't mind interacting with people or having beef. But you don't get personal and bring people into it. You don't bring people's missuses into it, or ex-missuses, or kids. Just keep it clean. But, onwards and upwards, things are looking good for Porky's Corner. Uh, I need to get settled with what office I'm going to be using soon. So, it's a moving factories. I might not be moving. I might be staying. So, we're going to see, but... It's just a case of getting it into a routine, but we're finding our feet, aren't we? We've only really been trying since Christmas, and I'm happy with how things have gone on. I mean, it took me a year to get 100,000 views. I mean, how crap is that? Because I, I was playing at the game, wasn't I? But in nine months, we've done 510,000, and it's only me in it talking. I don't get any access to people. And when I do, I have to go 400 mile round trip and uh, then it don't do many views, but you've got to put the effort in. For example, the Jimmy Tibbs interview I did. Jimmy Tibbs made the hair stand up on my arms. It was like that first time I met Frotch when we got chatting. Hair stood up on my hands. 
That's crazy that, isn't it? Is that crazy? It's only ever happened. We frotched Jimmy Tibbs and what other one now? I went out on a night out with Razor Ruddock. Me, Razor Ruddock, Kev, and Snowden from Everton Football Club. Three years ago, we went out round Rotherham, drinking. And air stood up on me hands. Air was standing up on me hands with some, when I met Razor. I thought he was really funny. Proper funny bloke, Razor. And he's a good pals with Kev, isn't he? But, that, yeah, things like that. But, but the Jimmy Tibbs one were really different because I were nervous. And he was like, do you want a cap of tea, Stan? But yeah, we all have heroes, don't we, I suppose, in life. I like my heroes, the boxing people, aren't they? Steffi Bull's a hero of mine. He's on my wall of shame, me and Steffi. Give me a pair of gloves on my birthday, I've got it framed. He's still on wall. Tyson's on wall. So, he's on wall, Tyson, so it's all good. You can, you, people can do things that you don't like, you don't mean to say that you want them dead. Tyson Fury does some things that I don't agree with and I pull him up on it. But also, he's probably the best boxer in the world at the moment, in the heavyweight division. Uh, but, you know, onwards and upwards, channel's going to keep moving forward. I'm going to finish off tonight when I come in. And I'm going to take a few, do a bit of filming now. Take a few, uh, take a few pictures, take a few videos, uh, to be honest, of me take it, pot in a few balls, I'm going to try a few different things today. Here, here's, here's a porky summit for you. Did you know 89% of people who set the driving position don't set it correctly? I mean, look how I've got my driving position here, right? What I do, right, I set it I've pulled the steering wheel to me. It's like women do it, 92% work wrong bra. Well, what I'm on about now is driving positions. Loads of people don't set the, set, the, set it correctly. I do. So, and it's like driving a different car. So we have to try things differently, don't we? You have to try things. Come out of your comfort zone. Strong lamb. Three quid for one lamb at petrol station. I'm not paying that. Shout out to Bullseye Motorists of South Yorkshire. Shout out to Fryber. Fryber Place in Fryber, Rotherham. Thank you very much. Keep them coming. But if you could get me some of them other colours, you know, the ones that are different. I don't want the ones that you just don't sell. And I also want a mixture, if you can, next time. I know you're watching. Sort me a mixture out and I'll big you up on the channel. I used to do debt collecting for these in 1991, Bullseye, so they've always liked me. I'm likeable, aren't I? I'm a lovable lummox. Michelin man, prick, whatever you want to call me, but genuine. So that's about it really, uh, we're going to have a game of snooker, then we're going to do some more filming on the way home, uh, and then I'm going to look at who I'm going to interview because people have busy schedules and to be honest with you, I don't really like interviewing people but I like giving our fighters a bit of exposure so I'm going to give Tommy Frank some exposure this week and I'm just going to say to Tommy Tommy I know you don't make the decisions but I want to see you fight Sonny Edwards that's what I want to see or I want to see you coming out saying that your team don't think you're ready now I could get into a lot of trouble for saying that but but when I get Dennis pinned down this week I'm going to uh, I'm going to I'm going to say in fact let's ring Dennis now see if we can get him to uh, comment on this Yeah, I agree wholeheartedly. In fact, we'll leave the Dennis one till I see him in person. I'm just going to say, Den, what we're doing about Sonny Edwards. I can't hold back any of these emails any longer, Den. 
you know, the fans are not stupid. Hardcore fans are not stupid. Everybody who subscribes to my channel and watches channel, even comments section, I read them all, but I haven't got the password to to, uh, to reply to you, but I read them all, and uh, I just think that... I think that they should fight. I think Terry Chapman Diamond's got it, got it, got it bang on that Edwards is in front of Tommy so far in their development. I know Teddy put, puts it into big words, but that's basically it, really. But I don't know. Cal Yafai's uh, got a belt, hasn't he? Would Would Tommy beat Cal Yafai? No, but Cal Yafai can't go on forever, can he? So that's how I look at it. But peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. I'll leave that rubbish there. With my sunglasses in here. It's raining. I'll leave that there as well. Uh, in fact, I'm going to take that in here because I'm going to need. I'm going to need batteries, aren't I? So, peace out. Then keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. It's a fantastic sport. Shout out to Ray Mondo. Shout out to Rico, Terry Chapman, Dharma, Ozzy Smith, Smido. Shout out to Dave Allen. Dave, one of your mates, telling me you watch all my videos. Well done, Dave. Even though we don't see you much now, Dave, because you don't want to come on my channel because you we Eddie now and you're sort of in between. Listen, Dave, at least you should grow a pair and come and say that to me instead of telling other people. Just say you want to get a few quid on... on uh, Just say I want to get a few quid out for me and set myself up. But don't bullshit it. Just be yourself. Don't be coming out with utter nonsense. Because, you know... People see through nonsense. Peace out. Bump. Got to go for three out of three for twenty quid. I mean, come on.